Hey, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. This is day number 10 of our road trip across the country here, and we are going to a friend's house that I used to work with. His name is Brian, and he has a little homestead that he's setting up here in Colorado. We are in or near Blackhawk, Colorado, which is way up. I think we're at about 10,000 feet. Correct me if I'm wrong, YouTubers. But we're close to 10,000 feet because I'm out of breath just trying to talk to you. So come along with us today. We're going to check out Brian and Amy's place here in near Blackhawk, uh, Colorado. I guess that's where we're at. Uh, that's what that thing says. So must be pretty close. Check it out. It's beautiful. Colorado is a beautiful state just an awesome place to live so high up here I bet they have snow probably six months out of the year I hate to say it this is the last stop in a road trip day 10 Woo! In 600 feet, mm -hmm. turn left. beautiful beautiful place if you look right where that bug turd is right there that's where we're going kind of right there beautiful beautiful mountains here in Colorado it's very hazy right now all these forest fires out here and it's funny the smoke is blowing in from montana and the bug crap is blowing in from i think that blew in from utah all right guys we're with my buddy brian here brian has moved from north carolina here to what what town is this this is uh black hawk colorado so we're in black hawk colorado it, guys you got to see this view before we even start talking this will be the view off his front porch and that's the foundation that he's putting in when i point this that way it automatically says mountain <laughs> <laughs> wow high tech so yeah that's some high tech stuff so brian has put in a foundation for his house here and basically you bought plans from an architect or had an architect yep. design yeah we, we met an architect through a timber frame uh, builder and uh, he put together a set of plans based on our specifications and what we wanted to accomplish um, we're actually going to build in two different phases and so we're building the master suite with a temporary kitchen first and then, uh, then we're, once we're moved in, not paying any rent to anybody, then we'll start worrying about the, the second phase and the master. So right now we're in, up in the Aspen, we're what, 8,500 feet up? Uh, 9,300. 9,300 feet up, gonna be a lot of snow, a lot of cold <laughs> weather to deal with. What's the R value on this? Uh, uh, it's a R22, so, so, and that's kind of the minimum um, gotcha. that we got, so, um, but it's, uh, <laughs> Two inches of uh, polystyrene on the inside and the outside. Yeah. And uh, so this is the polystyrene foam that you build. If you say it's two inches thick inside yep. and outside, it's got little grooves in it here to interlock it together. Yep. It's like a giant Lego, yep. basically. Yeah, and, and it it's really good for a homeowner to do because it's so lightweight. Yeah. You can you just stack them up, and uh, you know a little bit every day, and by the end. You gotta. You pour your concrete. Yeah. So let's go look at that real quick. Yeah. This is the foundation right here, guys. Yeah. And basically, we're. He said you ordered how many yards of concrete? Uh, I ordered 25. 25 yards of concrete, and we'll fill in, and this will be the foundation, and that'll be their like basement window and door area. Yep. Walk and out. And we'll have a walkout basement concrete pad there, and we'll backfill all this in. So. This is a start. This is an awesome, awesome start. It really makes it easy for a homeowner to do it themselves. You know, if you've got the time and the and the energy to do it, cool. um, you can save a ton of money uh, by doing it yourself. Plus, you get the the insulated value, um, especially up here in the mountains. We want to be as warm as we can, and uh, this is definitely the best way to do it. I thought. I'm out of breath. <laughs> this this it, has it, got me. This it has takes. got me. I got to get used to this. Look at this view. God, it's just just look, look. Don't look at my head though. Look at that. Yeah, it's and so it's pretty. even it's even better when the smoke from Montana is not blowing in. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the next question is, Brian, where does the poop go? We want to know. Yeah. So septic tank. Septic tank. Yeah. So this is our uh, our two compartment tank. We actually have to have three compartments, and the infiltrator systems don't come with a three compartment tank so we had to get a separate dosing chamber which is over there and we'll connect them together so basically the septic goes from the house into yep. this tank yep this tank fills 
and it disperses out into the other yeah so it'll overflow into the dosing chamber once that fills up to a certain level it automatically will um, pulse dose the septic field and send like 100 gallons down into the field at one time which then you know spills out it actually gets sprayed out into the filtration material nice. the sand or decomposed granite so oh, cool yeah. so really complex stuff and I wouldn't dare tackle this. This guy's got, <laughs> he, he's got the knowledge right here. So when I get ready to build my place, I'm going to call him up and be like, hey, uh, <laughs> you want me to, I'm going to think I might fly you out of here, buddy. <laughs> so you want some North Carolina fresh air or not so fresh air? Let's go down and take another look inside the house here and, and we'll uh, talk just a little bit more. We'll also talk about, so you, you dug all this out with your uh, tractor, right? Right, yeah. So, you know, before we uh, moved up here, we had rented, uh, a mini excavator to do the driveway and such but uh, you know for the amount of work that we're gonna have to do for excavating we uh, thought we'd buy a tractor because we're gonna need it for maintenance of the driveway and so on and what we've saved on excavation has already paid for the tractor nice it looks like you've got porcupines uh, eating your bark off your trees up here porcupines or the elk elk, elk and oh, deer elk rubbing. Okay. rubbing up all there's a ton of it over there let's take you over and we'll show you the elk rubs and we'll show you the tractor so back in here the elk have been rubbing the aspen trees right here i guess they just rub their horns on it yeah these, those must be some monster elk and over here is the tractor so it's a coyote um ck 3510 okay uh with a loader and a backhoe nice and you say the backhoe is oh it's attached all the way back here so it's not three point yeah it's, uh, the whole frame nice. yeah it's really rugged cool. Um, you've used it for all your excavating everything wow, yep wow. so what, what does one of these cost i got this whole package with the um box blade and the forks for about 27.5 we've got a quick detached bucket, bucket yep. and it really nice. really does a good job coyote coyote attractor <laughs> guys i can't stress enough to you that i'm so out of breath right now and i'm walking down a hill <laughs> This altitude's crazy. So we live at 300 feet. And these guys move from 300 feet, but they're all acclimated. I don't have to go home and take like 15 aspirin to thin my blood. <laughs> you said the walls are nine feet high, right? Yeah, so it'll be, it'll, it'll be four inches of uh, concrete flooring actually on top of the footing. And then from there up, it's nine feet. So we get a little bit of backfilling of gravel and, and so on to do. Now you plan on heating with wood as your primary heating source? Uh, we're going to have a wood stove on the second floor, but we're going to run uh, radiant in-floor heating in the concrete. We're going to do uh, spray urethane uh, foam for all the main insulation upstairs, so it should be really a warm house. So guys, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer, Mrs. Stony Ridge, Amy, and Brian. And <laughs> hey. this is their awesome <laughs> rad place that they're building in Colorado. Just thought we'd show you all the cool stuff that's going on here. So <laughs> thanks a lot for watching us today. Click that like button and can we get a woo. Woo! <laughs> After talking to this microphone, stay tuned and give her a website. <laughs> stay tuned. We'll give you Amy's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> stay tuned, guys. We're going to show you the crafts that Amy's been working on. She's been doing some awesome stuff with honeybees and bee comb and stuff like that. And we'll give you her website address, too. So if you want to order some of this awesome jewelry, pretty rad. So, guys, I want to show you what Amy's got going on here. She makes all sorts of different types of jewelry out of honeybee comb stuff. And you know, this is uh, this is not manly Josh farm vlog stuff. This is just awesome stuff. Check this thing out. It's just made out of honeycomb. And basically she takes a rubber mold or a silicone mold of honeycomb and makes this stuff and then makes it into jewelry. And then does a copper plating. Is that right? Tell me about it. Yep. Um, one of the terms that people use is electroforming. So when you copper plate, when you plate with metal for more than 30 seconds, you're actually encouraging metal to grow for a long period of time. It's called electroforming. Cool. Especially when you use organic forms. Nice. So this is some examples of some of the awesome stuff she's making here. Mm -hmm. Like these are pendants, I guess. Yeah, They're all different types all of different pendants. All different types of pendants. The... And she's into crystals and <laughs> earrings and just, I mean, this is the total hippie package right here, okay? So yeah, living the dream. I'm we're going to go out and check out your electro plating. Is that what you call it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, check out this bracelet. Show me this bracelet. This is a copper cuff of hot honeycomb, original honeycomb. Nice. Made nice. in jewelry. If the zombie apocalypse does hit, we can come here and Brian can show us how to build a whole house out of 
nothing but paper and, and styrofoam, <laughs> and Amy could decorate that thing like my daddy. <laughs> homemade Sour bread, dough. homemade meat, homemade, we, homemade cookies, <laughs> like homemade stuff. cookies, and we do not advocate. This is non-alcoholic mead. <laughs> <laughs> really true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's his glass. Uh, now we made out. We just made out. Sorry. Stage one, when making the rings, I take the stone and cover the stone in a conductive surface. This is graphite paint. So it's okay. painted around the stone. And then the stone is sealed with latex paint to prevent etching. Okay. So then you take this and you put it into the bath. It consists of a power supply. So okay. this is a five amp power supply okay. and we've got current going through these copper pipes yep. and then the items that are getting plated are hanging off of this brass bar right here nice. so this is a ring in progress it's a little pink looking but once you shine it up with a wire bristle brush you end up getting a shiny copper finish and then you can decorate that however you want you can use a patina make it darken it Cool. So an example of a finished product is a ring like this. So what's different about it, this is Labradorite. When you get copper to grow from electricity, it creates this, all this really cool texture, like kind of organic looking, bubbly. It's very neat looking. It's like yeah. a unique setting for the stone. Yeah, like something artisan made. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Beautiful. Awesome. Now, could you do gold like this? Is there a different solution you could put in here for gold or yeah. whatever? You just buy yeah. this blue solution right here? Yeah. The blue is the copper, so okay. that's the copper solution. And then if you want to say you want to do silver plating on top of that, you can get another kind of solution. Instead of using copper pipes, you would use a silver anode. Okay. And then the solution gets starts to become a little bit more toxic. Gotcha. The more so uh, yeah valuable the, so the metals the, you use the more They're, valuable metal the yeah. more you want to put it in your garage yeah you would probably or, need a fume hood set up because it okay. produces cyanide gas as a gotcha. product so, so gold this, and silver are possible and you i'd prefer to probably send them off to a professional to do it because i don't have that kind gotcha. of setup here and this is nice and safe and pretty yeah cool. and it's it's acidic it's very acidic in there so if you have like a cut on your finger it probably would sting quite a bit but usually i would try to use rubber gloves if i was handling a lot of that material cool well, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this awesome trip to Amy and Brian's. We're definitely coming back out here if they'll have us. Once the house gets built, we'll 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 crash the party. We'll, we'll come in here. We'll bring them all kinds of stuff that they can make more stuff out of. Bring some stuff from North Carolina to them, and this is awesome. So, guys, click that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching Stony Ridge Farmer. This is the last of the vlogs from our road trip we're going back to north carolina right now we're just uh i guess east of denver west of denver or west of boulder colorado somewhere up in the mountains <laughs> and we got a long drive ahead of us so thanks a lot for watching give us a thumbs up all right Woo. well come on down to the stony ridge bring your wife and bring your kids we're living life pure and sweet 